Okay, this is how I am repairing a 15 year old tool trailer that from the manufacturer wasn't all that terrific, uh, wasn't waterproofed. So as you can see around the hinges, there's a lot of deterioration going on. Now what's inside this door is three quarter plywood and aluminum, mill finish on the inside, white on the outside. Then it has this framework around here, around picture frame. So we're going to be able to save this. This is about the only thing we can save on this project. Well, and the hinges, of course, we can save these. But you, you can tell how, how rotten everything is. So. so here is one of the doors taken off. All the metal has been taken off. You can see that the metal never was bonded to the plywood core and you get a good view of how the water can penetrate the edges and uh, rot the thing out and so have some good plywood left but so what I'm doing over here now I've cut the plywood for the new door there it is and now I've cut the aluminum and what i'm doing now is sanding the high gloss off of it so contact adhesive will bond better as you can see in in the glare perhaps you see the little ridges i've created in there so that the contact adhesive will bond so i'm planning to contact the plywood here and then the surface of this and then put it together so that um First of all, when you touch the door, you don't have that hollow feel. But secondly, that'll make it more difficult to, for water to get through. Now then I'm gonna waterproof the edges of the plywood. And then when I go to put these uh, picture frames back in, I'm going to silicone in here as I apply it over and then every bolt and screw that goes together will have silicone in it as well and I feel confident that uh, it'll last longer than the rest of the trailer does step is to wipe the dust off with denatured alcohol it'll flash off very quickly All right now we are applying the contact adhesive to one side of the metal cover it 100 percent it's even cooling and we'll let that dry to the proper tackiness now you've got to recoat, or not recoat, originally coat one side of your, the mating part of your plywood. You don't do that with contact adhesive, it will not bond, which you'll see in a moment as we put this together. This is a little bit too wet. So this is just about right. You can feel just a little tackiness without being too liquidy wet. This one's still a little liquidy wet. The next step, now that it's dry enough, tacky enough, is to put these strips down here to keep the two, to keep the two from bonding because if you let it touch, you're not gonna move it. So you put these spacers here until you get it lined up like you want, then you pull the spacers out one at a time. Okay, now we got the aluminum 
is this is just a blue film, plastic film, and we got it laying squared up with the edges, laying on top of our shims, keeping it spaced off plywood so that we can control the application of it. All right, so you rock the shims to break the bond, and then you just slide them out. And then you use the roller and press it in. Go ahead and take these off, right? Yeah. All right, now that I've got the lamination, the metal on both sides, Proofing the raw edge of plywood. Just taking every opportunity to waterproof this whole door so it won't ever rot again. Now, what I'm using is You can use Red Guard or any other equivalent. So this is the first door, or the second door, completed actually. Um, and uh, edges are waterproof. I'll just let this dry. And tomorrow I will mount the hinges and hardware and mount it back to the trailer. Um, what I like to do is clean any kind of liquid whether it's waterproof, paint, drywall mud, don't leave all this buildup on the edges. It only makes your next use more miserable. Go ahead and clean it, keep it clean so everything's in great shape when you need to use it next time. Now, I just wanted to show you <clears throat> what you, you should do if you wanna make life easy on you the next time uh, when you're working with, whether it's waterproofing, drywall mud, or paint. Clean the rim, clean the edges, clean the lid. This was completely solid blue would build up. I couldn't get it completely clean, but that helps keep things much easier to work with next time you open that bucket. All right, so here we are next morning. Last night we put the waterproof edging and let it dry and uh, that typically needs about an hour, but it was late, it was cold, so it was uh, overnight. So this morning I'm going to uh, show you how I'm waterproofing even more over top of the waterproofing. So I'm going to apply silicone along the edge, and I can't do it while I'm holding the phone, so I'm going to put it down here and smear it completely 100% with my finger before I set this flange on. Now you can see right here where I've already done that and applied these and I put a dab of silicone under every screw before I secured it in place. All right, now you can see the bead of silicone I've applied right about midway down through there and then I just take my finger and spread it reason I'm choosing to do this, last time I put a bead and trusted that the channel on the first door, the channel would spread it, which it will, but I put too much and it oozed out beyond the flanges and I had a mess to clean up. So I'm trying to control that mess with this method here. Now 
And I just gotta wipe silicone off. Here's a note that I wanna show you. This screw here is what the manufacturer put in the door. Now this screw has a self-drilling tip to it. And they're designed when you put metal to metal, but we're going into wood. We're going through this metal, but into wood. So I'm actually using a three quarter inch screw with a pan head on it, which holds better into the wood than this one will, because this one's going to pre-drill and leave the smallest amount of thread to bite. So that one from the manufacturer just amazes me that they don't think those processes out. But so you can see I've put a dab of silicone on each screw head and I've already secured these in. And this is my last one before I do the top of it. Now along this top edge, I had run out of the three quarter screws and all I had left then was these one inch screws and just barely the tip would go through and hit the opposing side and wouldn't give enough torque on this side. So what I've done now is I've gone ahead and pre-drilled about three quarters deep. I'm gonna go to the side grinder and take that little point off so it won't touch the opposing flange. Then I'll silicone these holes and run those screws on in. Okay, you might can tell I just barely took the tip off. Now it's ready to go in. I've already siliconed the holes. Let me remove that one. That's one I didn't file down. by yourself can be a challenge but so I silicone the holes here in the structure where I'm going to mount the door hinge now there's no wood behind that it's all metal and I just wanted to uh, seal the hole from the elements I didn't want water to penetrate through any openings at all sorry about that I can't operate the camera and hold it the same place so I'm gonna screw that in place. All right, now I've flipped the door over and this is the outside of the door. And you can see uh, about an eighth of an inch gap between this metal flange and the exterior skin. Now the reason for that is as I put the screws in tight from the back side, that's how much bigger this track on the flange was in the plywood, but that makes a beautiful place to fill in with silicone. So that's my next step. Because once I put the hinges on, I won't be able to, uh, the hinge will cross here and up here, and it'll be difficult to get a good silicone point. So I'll silicone this and then let it dry before I hang the door. All right, now that's the door hung up. So the bolts, they've all been siliconed. And let's see if it fits. Hard to do this holding the camera. Well, I used to couldn't do that. That was one hand. Used to couldn't do it with two hands. It was so rotted. So here's all the rotten material. That's one door in there. But those will be there until the trailer falls off the axle. <laughs> 